this morning very much appreciate uh, you coming out uh, the purpose of this morning's press conference and event is really to talk about the impact that measure 80 which would regulate and tax marijuana similar to how we manage and regulate liquor in the state of Oregon would not only benefit the state of Oregon make our community safer and our kids safer but according to a new study that came out yesterday by a leading think tank would actually take a massive bite out of the profits of Mexico's very, very dangerous, very deadly drug cartels. So today we have a collection of uh, former public safety professionals, law enforcement officers, probation and corrections officers. Uh, I have a statement that I'll be reading a, a little bit later from a 23-year veteran of the Milwaukee Police Department about his point of view on the importance of ending prohibition of marijuana. Uh, so we'll hear from each of the speakers about their point of view. Why is it so important as uh, as a mother, as a law enforcement professional, as an Oregonian to support Measure 80 and to end marijuana prohibition here in the state of Oregon. So here joining us today we have Ann Witte, who is a practicing attorney, a criminal defense attorney and a member of the Oregon Criminal Defense Lawyers Association. Uh, we have uh, Sarah Frank. Sarah is the founder of Moms for Marijuana International, a, uh, an advocacy group of mothers concerned about the damage prohibition has done to our society. Uh, behind me, we have Madeline Martinez. Madeline is representing law enforcement against prohibition and Oregon Normal as well, and is, uh, a former corrections uh, guard in a women's maximum security prison in California. And then we have Casey Hansen, who's a former police officer from Lawrence, Kansas, and uh, for identification purposes, is the chair of the Multnomah County Democratic Party. So with that, I'm going to hand it over to Casey to start us off, and then we'll go from there. I, I'm just going to be extremely brief. My law enforcement career in Lawrence, Kansas was, was short as about six years, and then I moved out to Oregon and worked for the Forest Service, uh, where I was also level two law enforcement, but not a full-time cop. And my experience at, uh, in Lawrence, I was on the University of Kansas, and there was use of marijuana and there was use of alcohol. And my experience there, both substances being used illegally by students up there at the time was I saw some devastating impacts of alcohol use. I saw at least two young students, 19, 18 years old, disable themselves for their entire lives from activities with alcohol. I saw none such with marijuana. I think what we need to remember is that this is a health issue, not a law enforcement issue, and it shouldn't be a law enforcement issue. From a personal perspective, I think we also need to remember that this, this cycle of the drug war, 30 years of the drug war, has not produced a drug-free society by any means. What's produced is, is individuals that have had records, it gives them a lifelong long stigma from the minimum that they can't get a driver's license to, the, to uh, not being able to get jobs. Also, it disproportionately affects communities of color. More women, more members of the communities of color are, are, incarcer are convicted and incarcerated for drug crime, crime than any other across the nation. This has to be addressed. It is disproportionate. It's not fair to our entire community. So with that, I just want to like to turn yeah. over. Thank you. All right. Um, next, we're going to hear from Ann Witte, who is a practicing attorney here in the state of Oregon. Ann? I've been defending Washingtonians and Oregonians charged with marijuana offenses since 1974. Um, and I, I haven't seen it uh, get any markedly better or any markedly worse as far as the penalties go. People are going to prison for it. I had a client go to get a two-year sentence uh, last year. It, and the other thing is people say, well, less than an ounce, who needs that? You could have that much. But if you're, if you're convicted of less than an ounce, you will lose your driver's license. If you lose your driver's license, you will likely lose your job. It's possible that you will you may lose your job without being convicted if you don't pass a drug test. 
these, uh, this law, this war on drugs is a war on Oregonians and Washingtonians, on U.S. citizens who use marijuana and don't harm anybody by it and are being significantly punished day after day after day right in that courthouse across from us and the courthouse behind us. Uh, years and years of prison over marijuana. We need to put an end to it. I, I urge you to put an end to prohibition finally. Thank you. Thank you, Ann. Uh, I'm going to read a, a statement from a police officer who is not able to be with us this morning. Uh, his name is Bruce Litchfield, and he was a member of the Milwaukee Police Department in Clackamas County for 23 years and a police officer in rural Oregon for two years prior to that. So this is his statement, uh, not my words, but his. A couple of years ago, I retired after more than 25 years as a police officer. Much of that time was spent with the Metropolitan Police Department, but I also spent the early part of my career with a couple of departments in rural Oregon. Over the years, I have met many, many people. I have seen people under the influence of a lot of things, alcohol, prescription pills, hard drugs like meth and heroin, but at no point in my quarter century as a cop did I think that marijuana use posed a serious threat to our community. I've never smoked marijuana, and when it does become legal, I don't plan to start. I have never had any interest, but I know a lot of adults who do choose to consume marijuana, and I don't call them criminals. I call them my neighbors, my family members, my friends. Almost everyone I know who chooses to use marijuana does so because they enjoy it. In the way I enjoy a good craft beer, the people I know who consume marijuana do so responsibly. The reality is, there will always be a small subset of people who abuse what others may choose to use responsibly. I've seen it with illegal and more often legal drugs, sleeping pills, pain pills, alcohol. If we're worried about abuse, we should regulate marijuana and tax it and use the tax revenue to help pay for drug and alcohol treatment programs. And that's what Measure 80 does. That's why I've decided to vote yes on Measure 80. 7% of the tax revenues from the sale of licensed marijuana will go to fund existing drug and alcohol treatment programs in Oregon. And most of the tax revenues, 90%, will go to fund our schools and other general fund obligations. Measure 80 isn't perfect, but I've never gotten to vote for something perfect in the almost 40 years I've been a voter. Measure 80 is, however, sensible and practical. It takes the approach we've developed over decades of regulating liquor and applies it to marijuana. It's easy to understand and would definitely be more effective than what we are doing now. I know I'm not alone as a law enforcement officer supporting Measure 80. Most cops became cops to protect our communities, to go after the predators that threaten our kids and our lives. Regulating and taxing marijuana benefits the police because it allows us to focus on real public safety priorities. When adults can buy marijuana at state licensed stores, I see that action putting drug dealers and cartels out of business. They won't be able to compete with safe, convenient, market priced marijuana. And just like home brewers, people will be able to grow for themselves. But they'll be more likely to go to the corner cannabis shop, show their identification, and buy the brand they prefer. I heard about a poll this year that said two in three Americans agree that the war on marijuana has failed. Well, I'm part of that 67%. Prohibition hasn't yet and won't ever work. It only wastes our already limited financial resources and ruins the lives of otherwise peaceful, contributing, law-abiding Oregonians. It's time for a new path for Oregon, regulating and taxing marijuana like liquor. Measure 80 is the way forward. Again, that's a statement from Bruce Litchfield of Clackamas County, Oregon. And with that, I'm going to bring up Madeline Martinez, who is here representing the National Advocacy Group Law Enforcement Against Prohibition. Thank you. Um, LEAP is made up of current and former members of law enforcement and the criminal justice communities who are speaking out about the failures of our existing drug policies. These policies have failed and continue to fail to effectively address the problems of drug abuse, especially the problem of, uh, of the problems of dr juvenile drug use and the problems of addiction and the problems of the crime caused by the existence of the criminal black market in drugs. My deputy in service in the criminal justice system with the Department of Corrections, California Department of Corrections, taught me that resources are dangerously overburdened. Cannabis prohibition adds to that burden 
and is a growing public safety concern because it redirects vital resources away from violent crimes, murder, sexual attack, child abuse, and other serious and dangerous public safety issues by wasting valuable time investigating and arresting otherwise law-abiding citizens. Measure 80 protects our most valuable treasures, our children, by the creation of a responsibly regulated system of safe access to cannabis, removes the drug dealer from the equation, and uh, will, well, and the reason for that is because drug dealers, they don't ask for ID, and they don't just sell marijuana. They sell a number of different uh, drugs, and we'd like to keep our children safe. Please vote yes on May Measure 80 to protect our children, grow Oregon's economy, and because prohibition is just plain unpatriotic. We have neglected our infrastructure in our state, in our country, and we need to utilize our resources, our revenue, more effectively by protecting our community in all areas of public safety. Thank you. Thank you, that was Madeline Martinez representing Law Enforcement Against Prohibition, LEAP. The website is www.leap.cc. And last, we're gonna hear from Sarah Frank, who's the founder of the national group Moms for Marijuana. Sarah, you can share a few words with us. Thank you. I wrote it down so I don't just ramble this time. <laughs> um, regardless of current laws, Marijuana is bought and sold daily to be used by adults all over the state of Oregon. The money from these sales is not taxed and it does not contribute to our society. Oftentimes, the stability of good parents is put into question and families are torn apart, all because of marijuana use. While at the same time, other parents can freely consume legal drugs like alcohol. Everyone always asks, what about the children? Right now, it is easier for those underage to get marijuana than it is for them to get alcohol and tobacco because under a regulated system, cashiers are required to ask for identification and verify age before selling these drugs. Drug dealers on the black market do not ask for ID and access to marijuana also means access to harder and more dangerous drugs like methamphetamine and ecstasy. Despite how easy some people think it is to get a medical marijuana card, if you are not lucky enough to be in extreme pain or to be fighting for your life, you can't get one. The current laws make it extremely difficult. There are not thousands of recreational users masquerading as medical patients just to get high. That's what they're using the black market for. And despite being the first state to decriminalize marijuana, Oregon residents who choose marijuana over alcohol still face penalties and fines. These taxpayer dollars and our community law enforcement resources still go to prosecute these nonviolent offenders. And oftentimes, these nonviolent offenders are our children, <laughs> leaving them with a record that can impact their entire lives. In every war, there are victims, and the victims of the war on marijuana are not only those who are unjustly persecuted for a harmless plant. They're not just those who face losing their jobs because of a drug charge or a dirty urine test. These victims are also the families and the loved ones of these so-called criminals. Marijuana users are our friends in our family. They are also often somebody's mommy or daddy, but every single one of them is somebody's child. The war on marijuana is tearing our families apart, and it's time that we do something about this. With the passage of Measure 80, marijuana sales will be regulated and adults will have legal access to marijuana, making the black market obsolete and replacing marijuana dealers with cashiers and bartenders who, just as with alcohol sales, are required to ask for ID. Let's not forget the jobs and the new products and the revenue that will help our economy. By voting yes on Measure 80, we are voting that responsible users will no longer be committing a crime that regulations be put into place to protect our children and that our society finally can be able to benefit from the consumption of marijuana that legalized or not continues to happen and will continue to happen every day in this state. Thank you.
So to conclude, Measure 80 is an opportunity for Oregonians to take a leadership role in this nation, to demonstrate that the war on marijuana has been a war on Americans, a war on people of color, a war on the poor. It has done nothing to accomplish the objectives it was supposed to accomplish. It has not made our society safer. It has not cut down on the demand. It has not cut down on the supply. It has made organized criminals much more wealthy and much more dangerous, and it has made Americans into criminals. Measure 80 is an opportunity to tax and regulate cannabis for adults 21 and over the same way we regulate liquor, because just like alcohol prohibition failed, marijuana prohibition has failed. And we can join our neighbor states like Washington and Colorado in the mountain region and make history by regulating, taxing, and licensing marijuana for adults. And finally, finally taking a sledgehammer to the war on drugs, beginning the movement for sensible marijuana policy here in the United States, and at the same time, funding critically needed services here in our own state of Oregon. The Mexican Competitiveness for Institute, the Mexican Institute for Competitiveness study that came out this week demonstrated that if any one state legalizes and regulates marijuana, it will cut up to 30% of the drug cartel's profits. 30% for one state to be able to legalize and regulate. This isn't just an opportunity for Oregon's economy and for Oregon's public safety. This is an opportunity for Oregon to contribute to national security. So I urge everybody, whether you are a cannabis user or not, whether you care for it or not, whether you have any interest in using marijuana or not, to vote yes on Measure 80 as a matter of public safety, as a matter of national security, as a matter of common sense, and as a matter of Oregon pride in setting the way for better national policy. With that, we're happy to take any questions. Yes.